Hi guys, so in today's video, we are gonna be talking about all of these drugstore products that I tried throughout the summer months. So these are products I picked up in May, June, July, and then some in August as well. I went ahead and put August inside of these since I was ready to review them. I'm gonna do something similar probably for September, October, November, once I get through testing some drugstore products um, that I've picked up in those months. But I like to do these videos and kind of come back and report to you guys on things that didn't work out for me, so things I'm calling fail things that were just fine, right? So they weren't extraordinarily amazing, but neither were they fail products for me. And then I also talk about a collection of products that I would definitely put in a favorites category. And I think it's important to call out here that when I say something is a favorite, it means I could see it being very high up, not only just in this group of products, but inside of my overall collection. You know, we got into a discussion in my comment section um, maybe a month or so ago around how there's a lot of makeup releases and there's a lot of products that are just fine. They're they're not bad. They're not awful. They totally work. You can get them to make beautiful eye looks or beautiful looks on your face, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're outstanding. That there's something about them that really makes you go, "Oh, wow." And I think sometimes we have a tendency to categorize as something either as awesome or a fail, like it works or it doesn't. And I think sometimes what we what's missing is the middle bucket that's like it's fine. Like it's not outstanding, but it's not awful either. So I'm trying to kind of build that distinction in as we're looking at this collection of products as a whole. Secondarily, I have sunlight coming in this window here to the side and I've got the blinds up um, so that I'm not like, you know, sunshine right on the side of my face. But now I've got these like polka dot things that shooting all over my skin. So I'm trying to like sit in such a way so that you're not so like seeing sunspots on my face but this is really my time to film and so it's driving me crazy that given how the sun is like setting and moving that I'm dealing with all of this so apologies if we end up throughout the video with like random sunspots on my face but we're just gonna have to make it work I think let's start with the things that didn't work for me then we'll move into the things I considered fine and then we'll move into the things that I would consider favorites all right let's get some of the giant things out of the way so that I can pull out of this little bin a little bit easier so a couple of eyeshadow palettes that I'm kind of putting in the fail category um one is from LA girl this is their haute heat palette I was so excited to see this uh, come out and I had a hard time tracking it down for a while. I thought the color scheme was really interesting. I liked the purples, um, the teals, as well as the neutral shades in there. I thought it was a mix of warm and cools, which was really nice. Um, unfortunately, the mattes in here were just very... Um, very powdery and very sheer like they, they really took a long time to build them up and even then they were kind of always lackluster and then the um, shimmer shades in here are kind of that mineral oil formula and sometimes a mineral oil formula when it's thicker um, can work out okay um, you can kind of shear it um, or build it up with your finger and but in the case of these, I just found them to be very difficult to work with, very difficult to build up, didn't pick up well on my finger, didn't pick up well on a brush. There were a couple shades that worked out okay, like this taupe shade down in uh, the bottom corner here, but I find that taupe shade, it seems to be fairly easy to formulate. Like I've got a lot of that shade and a lot of palettes that works well. Um, the purples did not work well at all and neither did the teals. Um, it, it was also a lot bigger than I was thinking it was going to be. I was kind of hoping it was going to be more of like a Huda sort of palette, maybe not that small, but more in that range versus something this giant. So unfortunately, this one just, I don't know, didn't work for me. I didn't really enjoy it any of the times I reached for it. The other palette that I'm putting in the fails is one that I kind of went back and forth whether or not I should put it in vines or fails. And I ended up putting in the fails just because uh, there were so many shades and things in here that I didn't like at all that I felt kind of weird putting it in the fines category and then saying how many shades didn't work for me. Um, so this is the Revolution Pro palette. This is their Lux Shadow palette. Um, I think the packaging is really nice. It's sturdy cardboard. It does have a nice mirror up here at the top. So no complaints on the packaging. This is definitely duping a Huda Beauty palette. And I do appreciate they attempted to dupe some of the textures that she had, but it, not just the colors. So a couple of things with this palette. One, two pressed glitters that have almost no 
base to them, so they really are just crumbly everywhere. They're very craft glittery, so they're big and chunky as well. So I'm gonna make go out on a limb and say these are probably not eye safe. You know, take that for what it's worth um, in terms of glitter and how you use it and whether or not you've ever had any issues. The issue with glitter, especially in bigger pieces, is definitely that if it gets into your eye, it could scratch your eye, which is why you get that sort of not eye safe thing. Um, the other thing I didn't like in here was this base. It's already started to dry out on me quite a bit. And I just, I don't want a cream shadow base in my eyeshadow palette. It's not something I'm interested in. I think that's just a waste of a shade. I did think that a couple of the shades in here were really pretty. So these two shimmer shades performed beautifully. The mattes were just, they were just okay. They weren't bad. I could get them to work, but I found that they faded by probably the five or six hour mark pretty significantly. And then a couple of the shimmer shades, um, in particular this one that had sort of this duo texture in it, really did not perform well. It was very thin and kind of chunky feeling. It had a lot of micro shimmer in it that never really adhered to the eyes. And then this burgundy shade hidden was kind of meh as well. So although there were a few pretty shades in here, and I definitely like the color family of it. I feel like there's just enough duds or things that I didn't like about this that I didn't even feel comfortable putting it in the fines category. All right, a couple other eye products. Um, two mascaras here. One that I thought was going to be in my favorites, actually. Um, this is the NYX On The Rise Mascara. It's a mascara that has a, a silicone wand to it. Um, I was wearing this for a few weeks and really liked the length and the definition it gave me as well as the volume. It was definitely a lifting mascara, it was curling, it was doing all the things that I really, really love in a mascara. Unfortunately, after about, gosh, it's probably about a month of using this, I traveled with this and used it and wore it all day. And so I was putting it to like the eight, 10, 12 hour day thing. And what I found is it was flake central. It was flaking and leaving little tiny black marks all over my face. And every time I went into the bathroom, starting at probably the six, seven hour mark, it was just everywhere. And so I feel like something in this either dried out very quickly um, or doesn't do well in long days situations because I just had, like I said, black fallout all over my face. And I have a zillion mascaras that don't do that. So I'm disappointed in this one because up until that sort of travel mode, like I said, after about three weeks of using this, about fourth week, until then I would have put this in my favorites and I'm still really bummed that it just kind of flakes all over the place. Let's talk about some face products. One that I will admit I didn't even end up trying, um, and we'll get to the why, is from Catrice. So this is their liquid camouflage under eye primer. It says for invisible lines. And so I thought, ooh, how interesting is that? It's like a clearish primer you put under your eyes that will help blur fine lines and maybe help your concealer go on better. The premise intrigued me. Unfortunately, this is so, oh God, it is so strongly fragranced. Like it is, it smells like intense potpourri. It's, it's bad. Like it's really, really strongly fragranced to a point that I don't want this anywhere near my face. And I certainly do not want this underneath my eyes. I, I it, why they decided to scent this so intensely, I have no idea, but I'm scared to even try this because of how strongly fragranced it is and how chemically it smells as well. So I like the concept of this product, but I didn't even test this one. I have two uh, concealers that are just not my favorite. Um, one, I think it's gonna come as a bit of a shock because it's been raved about so many times uh, on YouTube. I feel like every YouTuber is in love with this concealer and I, I strongly dislike it. Um, it's from CoverGirl. It is their True Blend Undercover Concealer. I have the shade Porcelain. There is one shade lighter than this. And it may be something to do with the lightest shades, but what I have found with this one is that it looks chalky underneath my eyes. I don't know how to describe it. It's not even the words drying concealer. It's that it doesn't even blend and it looks like I have just powdery parts underneath my eye. And I have tried um, blending it with my finger, blending it with a brush, blending it with a beauty blender. And every single time it just looks dry and chalky. I don't know how else to describe it. I know I'm not the only one having problems with this because a few of you guys have commented that you've had the exact same problem and it looks from your 
your pictures that you have similar skin tone to me. So maybe this is a really lovely concealer when it doesn't have so much white pigment in it to get this super light shade. Maybe in some of the more light to medium shades, um, this is a glorious concealer, but I just can't get along with it. I keep reaching for it. I, I bought this in, gosh, did I buy this in July, I think. So I keep pulling it out. Like I have it in my fully tested section in my beauty room and I keep pulling it out because I keep seeing more and more people talk about how much they love it and I pull it out again and I'm like okay maybe it was just a bad day maybe my eyes were more dried out than I realized and I'll put it underneath my eyes and I have the same experience every single time so I just I don't care for it the other concealer that I'm just I'm not in love with, and that kind of surprises me because I thought I would really like this. Um, this is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Radiance Concealer with Hyaluronic Acid and Acai. It says it's medium full coverage. I liked the matte version that they pulled out that, of this, I think last year. Um, it is definitely more drying, but I found it to work really, really well. Um, mostly I think because it fully set down, because it was matte, I didn't really have to powder it. Um, this one I do think I have to powder, but it just ends up looking even drier underneath my eyes. It is what I'm wearing today. Um, like I said, I don't think it is the worst concealer that I've ever used but I feel like my under eyes still get really dry looking by the end of the day. And I can't quite figure out why that is because I've tried other hydrating uh, concealers and even ones that I have to set with a little bit more powder and my under eyes look beautiful by the end of the day. This one just ends up making every line underneath my eyes highly visible. In fact, I feel like as I stared in the mirror before I started filming this, like the fine lines underneath my eyes are more pronounced than they've ever been. And I actually went and added a little bit more blurring powder underneath my eyes before I started filming to try and hide that a little bit. But I, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I thought I was really going to like this and the texture feels really nice. Like it feels really smooth and creamy and hydrating, but it just doesn't wear well on me. Um, let's talk about a blush and a highlighter. This blush from Makeup Revolution, I don't enjoy. Um, this is their Blusher Reloaded in Sweet Pea. I, I think it's because it's almost too light for even me. I get almost like zero pigmentation on my cheeks when I use this and I can't even build it up. Like it, it, it is honestly almost just a pinky face powder on me. They're so little pigment inside of this. Unfortunately, this one, uh, the darker shades I have, are almost always out of stock. Like from the second they launched this line on Ulta's website, the blushes have never been in stock with the exception of this shade and like a deeper shade. I would be curious to try a different one. The one thing I would say is that this does feel very smooth, but it also feels very powdery. So I just wonder, even with a darker shade, if this one would really look powdery on my cheeks. This one certainly does. Um, but yeah, the shade Sweet Pea does absolutely nothing for me and I will be getting rid of it after this video. Easing in and out here, trying to avoid the dots on my face. Not my favorite way of filming. Um, okay, so one final face product is from Face Candy. This is their uh, Rose Gold Just Glow Glow Dome Highlighter. Um, I saw this at Walmart and I thought, oh my gosh, do I have a dupe for my Stila highlighter? It kind of looked similar. It had that dome packaging. It seemed to be a creamy product. And this is so thick that I can't even figure out how to blend it on the tops of my cheeks. Like you can't do it with your finger. Like it just, you, you get some on your finger and the minute you press it down, you can't even move it around. It doesn't pick up with a brush whatsoever. Like it's just too much of a putty texture to blend seamlessly on the face. And although I think the color is pretty, I just, I haven't been able to get this blended out on my cheeks in a way that I think looks pretty whatsoever. All right, a couple of lip products that I haven't cared for at all. In fact, a couple of these have the exact same problem and that is that they are very chalky feeling on my lips. They don't feel smoothing. They just look, they look chalky. And I, there's a way to do a matte that is fully matte that glides across your lips, still looking matte, um, but is smoothing. Th these are not them. The other challenge with both of the products that we're gonna talk about here is that 
any part of your lip that is somewhat wet, it doesn't stick to. So the inner part of your mouth, like closer to you know your teeth and tongue, that area always has some moisture, some saliva on it. And this, neither of these lipsticks will stick to that area at all. So you get a very distinct ring around the inside of your mouth, almost like you had put on a liquid lipstick and eaten something and it had kind of rub rubbed off around the middle of your lips. These all do that to me immediately upon application. So the NYX lingerie push-up lipsticks both do this and I had tried a very light sort of peachy shade and I thought well maybe it's just this light peach that has a ton of sort of white base to it. Maybe let's try a deeper darker shade. So I went and got this sort of brownish color and the same thing happened. Um, and then the other one that does the same thing is from Makeup Revolution. This is part of their Pro line and these are their these are satin lipsticks. Um, they just have a really silicone Tony, slippy feel that never really sets down on your lips, doesn't play well with lip lines, etc. A couple other things about these lipsticks. The NYX lingerie uh, push-ups, at least the two shades that I have here, um, they have a bit of a glitter base to them. So the other thing that's weird about these is although they look perfectly creamy, once you apply them and if you go to wipe it off or if it fades off throughout the day, you're left with this strange micro glitter all over your lips, which you don't really notice when you're first applying it. Um, the other thing that I do not care about this formula is that it is heavily scented of mentholiptus. So I think because it's trying to do some sort of like plumping kind of action, they have put menthol in here to kind of stimulate and tingle your lips. I, it's not a nice peppermint scent. I, I don't mind peppermint, but I really dislike menthol because I think it just smells fake. So I, I couldn't get over the scent of these either. So these just didn't work at all for me. And then in terms of these, I mean, my biggest complaint with these, honestly, is just the silicone texture that never really adheres to your lips. And I tried a lighter shade first and I thought, okay, well, maybe it's this. Um, they also break off really easy because it is this drier texture. These have not traveled I, I, outside of my makeup room. I've only been using them here. So they're getting put into a bin or they're put into a, a drawer. They're not getting thrown around in a handbag, etc. This one's already broken off. I got a darker shade, similarly, similar thinking to that, thinking, okay, well, maybe it's just the lighter shades. Maybe the darker shades don't have this problem. And I, I feel like they do. They're just very slippy, very strange, just sit weirdly on my mouth. And then my final fail, another lip product, this is from Hard Candy. This is the Glitterati um, Crystal Lip Duo. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this, guys. I think this was an impulse purchase, mostly because I'd never tried a lipstick in particular that was so loaded with glitter the way that this one is. I should have known better that I wouldn't care for this chunky glitter inside of a lip product. I was enamored by how it looked in the container because of how sparkly I mean, it really is visually pretty to stare at. I just, I don't care for it, how it looks on my lips, and I don't care for the micro glitter that is left as this lipstick wears off. The gloss at the other end is also fully opaque. Um, and so because it is fully opaque, it completely covers up the glitter and the lipstick that's in here. So although you could wear these separately, I, they don't really work that well together because you put this on first, the lipstick on first, and then you put this over the top and it's like you didn't even need to put on the lipstick. It's that pigmented. So I don't know. This is clearly personal preference weighing in here. If you are really loving that sort of glitter flip look um, and you don't mind a lot of micro glitter on your lips, you think it's super fun uh, for holidays or just in general, you might enjoy this. The formula on these weren't bad. There was no scenting issues. The gloss on the other end isn't particularly thick or goopy. It's just, I didn't care for it. So now we come to the fine section. So these are products that were good. I made them work for me. I like a lot of elements to a lot of these, but there wasn't enough uniqueness about them or there were a few factors that didn't make them true favorites. And I think that's okay. I think there's a lot of really great makeup at the drugstore that's just fine. And I think there's a lot of really great makeup at Sephora that's just fine. Not 
everything can be a favorite. Let's talk about a couple eyeshadow palettes. One is from Makeup Revolution. Uh, this is just their Revolution line. So they released a line of eyeshadow palettes in these little tins. This is the Unconditional, Forever Flawless Unconditional Love Palette. This seemed to be a different formula and I had seen uh, Jen at Budiction do some swatches of these palettes and the formula looked different enough from other Makeup Revolution palettes that I thought I would give it a whirl and I'm glad I did because this is definitely the first Makeup Revolution formula that I have really enjoyed. As you can see, I put another one in my fails. I've decluttered most of, if not all, of my other Makeup Revolution eyeshadow palettes. I just find their formulas to just be enough subpar to everything else in my collection that I don't typically want to keep them. This is one I'm gonna keep. One, I love the color story. I thought this was a really interesting color story of pinks and reds and purples and some rusty colors. Like I just thought it was a really interesting color story. And I had a lot of fun playing around with the colors in this palette. I, I really did. I, I think the mattes built up nicely. It's definitely the nicest matte formula I've tried from uh, Makeup Revolution. I think the shimmers actually perform well with your finger or a brush. None of them are a super foiled texture in terms of like being that whoopow, high pigment shine sort of thing. But they all give a really nice sort of it's not satin. I mean, it's definitely metallic. It's just not foiled, I guess is what I would say, which as we've talked about here on my channel, something doesn't have to be foiled in order to be pigmented when it comes to a shiny eyeshadow. And that's how I feel about these. They're all nicely pigmented. They're just not wet foiled. So if that's what you prefer is that like gasp out loud, wet look eyeshadow, from your shimmer formulas, this probably won't be for you. But if you're like me and you find a place for what I would consider to be just normal metallic shadows that have good pigmentation and good payoff, you might really enjoy these. I think there are color schemes that were really interesting in all three of these. And it does look like their holiday palettes um, are going, this is still being made in China, but I think it's coming from a different lab than their other ones because I really do notice a difference in texture. It also does have a really nice giant mirror up here at the top. Now the the other thing I wanted to call out is that most of the shades inside of this palette are being listed as pressed pigments, which are then, when you peel back the little sticker on the back, being said are unsafe for eye area, which is something we see quite a lot, and when, especially when it says pressed pigments. Um, I have never really felt like pressed pigments are something that I am wanting to stand, like not put on my eyes. I've never had any issues with pressed pigments like causing eye irritation on me. Now I always put down an eyeshadow base first um, and maybe that helps with it as well. But according to the back here, this whole top row is pressed pigments. Um, these three here, which is interesting, that gold is being shown as a pressed pigment as well as this purple shade as a pressed pigment. Then they're also saying that, uh, let's see, these two reddish tones are pressed pigments just bear that in mind. I feel like there's definitely, if, if you are anti-press pigment and any ingredients that kind of then say make them unsafe for eyes, I did want to call that out that so many of the shades in this palette were technically pressed pigments. Another palette that I think is nice and I made some beautiful looks out of, in fact the formula impressed me for the brand, similar to Makeup Revolution where I haven't like loved all of their eyeshadows. Um, this palette from Essence, the Good Day Sydney palette, um, also kind of impressed me. It does have a tiny little mirror up here at the top and uh, you've got really interesting neutrals and then some soft shades, uh, sort of a salmon and a green and a couple of light and dark teals. And then you've got some nice mattes up here. Um, the formula on here is really pretty and it actually is nicely pigmented. Like I had a uh, very little issue building this up um, either with my finger or with a brush. I think you get really pretty um, soft metallics in here as well. Like I said, it's not that high foiled shine, but it's definitely giving you, it's picking up the light. You're getting a nice reflect from those two shades there. And that's one of the mattes there. This palette has two things kind of going for it that I didn't care for. One was you had two very similar 
peachy champagne colors in here. One that gets a little bit more peach and one that's a little more pink. So it's not this exact same shade, but I really didn't need both of those in here. So to me, that was a bit of a mistake. Um, but I did really enjoy this color combo and the looks that I came up with when I made it. I had no issues with fading or blending. Um, like I said, pigmentation was nice. So it's a good palette. I, like I said, do I think it is like the best, most outstanding palette I've ever used in my life? No. Uh, do I prefer ColourPop and BH Cosmetic formulas a lot more than this? Yes, which is why I'm putting it in the fines category. Really fun palette. Definitely could see myself playing with these colors again. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed that one. A couple other eyeshadows that I'm putting in the It's Fine category. So these are from CoverGirl. These are their True Queen Cream Shadow Sticks. I tried both a matte and a shimmer formula. I will say the matte shade that I tried, uh, which is 905, I don't know the color. They just put the number on the bottom of these, is a really nice taupey shade. I think it is a good all over lid shade that you can kind of buff up and call a day. Um, it, they're nicely creamy. You definitely have time to work with them before they dry down. And then I got sort of a deeper, more bronzy shade because I do like this color sort of all over my lid and then just call that day with these shadows. I did use both of these together as well just to kind of play around and went in with the matte shade first and kind of blended it up and then put this all over the top. Um, a couple reasons why I think this is just in my fine category is I like to blend these out. And what I noticed with the this shade in particular is as I blended it out, I really lost a lot of the really pretty shine. You really can't touch this shadow without losing some of the shine and shift to it. So you really have to kind of put it down on your lid and then not touch it and then kind of put down a little bit more and buff that out because anywhere you go to buff either with your finger or a brush, you're pretty much losing any of that really pretty satiny shine from it. I think it's pretty, but I don't necessarily think that there's anything in here that is just like, shockingly amazing. We've never seen this before. I do think these are fairly comparable to the Laura Mercier caviar eye sticks that I've tried, but to be honest, I would say the exact same thing about the caviar eye sticks that I would about these. So I do think that these are a dupe for the caviar eye sticks that I've you know, I've tried both the matte and the shimmer shades before. So if you love the Laura Mercier ones and you've been looking for a cruelty-free option that is a lot cheaper, obviously, as well, check these out. That style and that formula has just never been a true favorite of mine. I like it, I just don't love it. And then another product that I enjoyed, but I don't necessarily think it's a favorite, um, is from Makeup Revolutions Pro Line. This is their Eye Glisten. Uh, let's see, this is the shade it's, shade, it's Fate. It has a really nice champagne color on one end and then a gold glitter at the other end. The champagne color is beautiful. Um, this makes a fantastic inner corner highlight. It's really nice and brightening and really pretty and foiled. Like I really love the end of the, or this end rather, because I really do enjoy using cream shadows like this, both all over my lid, as well as sort of in my inner corner, because I find they last in your inner corner so well. The glitter is where I kind of started to feel like this product is not as good as it could be. It's not bad. I can definitely get the glitter to work, but the glitter is a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, it doesn't apply perfectly evenly. One of the things that I think makes the Stila glitter shadows so fantastic is that as you put them on, you really do have really good control over where the glitter goes. And with this one, I just felt like I was having to be super careful about adding it and then not having to touch that area. Otherwise it moved it around. And then I would end up with like spots that didn't have glitter where I wanted them and then lots of glitter in a different space. So the glitter worked. I just had to be super careful with it. Listen, this is a good product. It's not a bad product. I, I don't see myself getting rid of this one because I don't have a gold like this. And I really did enjoy the other end of it. It's just not as foolproof as the Stila shadow glitter shadows are. So one thing I forgot to mention about the CoverGirl eyeshadow sticks until I just went to the bathroom to wipe, wash off the glitter is these things are insanely waterproof. You will need a facial oil to get them off. I washed my hands with soap and water and scrubbed my hands in order to get that glitter off. And then I dried my hands with a towel and that is still left on my hand. Like that is a ton of products still left. These are incredibly long wearing. So if you are looking for a 
even a base for an eyeshadow. Um, these could be fantastic. In fact, part of the reason I know I will keep these is because I will use these as a base and then put some powder shadow over the top of them. It'll be bulletproof for 12, 15 hours. So in that respect, there is something very unique and fantastic about this formula. A couple other face products that I think are good, but just aren't favorites. Um, two from Makeup Revolution. So this is their Bronzer Reloaded. This is a baked bronzer. In fact, it is definitely similar to the bronzer that I had in my collection that was just in different packaging. Um, this is a baked bronzer that I do feel like is uh, definitely on the light side. And so unless you are super fair like me, I don't feel like this shade here is really gonna show up on you. It is, a, a hint more orange than I typically love. I kind of is borderline in terms of like too much warmth for me, but I do think it is wearable because it does blend on the cheek incredibly well. It's a soft baked formula, so it doesn't feel incredibly dry um, on your skin, and I do really appreciate that about it. I also find that this is one that is kind of hard to screw up because it is so fair and because it blends so well, you really can uh, not have to worry about how much you're picking up on a brush, etc. It does have a really nice sort of soft satin uh, texture to it. So a lot going for it. It's just the undertone is not quite my favorite. So that's why it's kind of sitting here in the fine. If you are somebody who has warmer undertones and are very fair, you might really enjoy this bronzer. Uh, it's just not quite the right undertone for me. And then they also did a whole line of highlighters reloaded. And I do like the packaging here. I think it's a really nice sort of peachy bottom with a rose gold top and it's sort of clear acrylic. I think it's pretty packaging. And this is the shade Dare to Divulge. This one's just a hint to metallic for me. It is the highlighter I have on today. It doesn't emphasize texture as poorly as many metallic highlighters do. I definitely do think this is one that does emphasize texture though. So if you, I mean, not to the extreme degree. So if you are looking for a highlighter that doesn't emphasize texture or minimizes texture, but still giving you a little bit of glow, I don't think this is going to be the formula for you. Now I say that, and I, I do know that a lot of people do prefer a more intense foiled metallic look highlighter. Um, it's not my personal preference, um, which is why I've put it in this category. If it was super metallic foiled and emphasized texture in a horrible way, and I've tried quite a few of those type of highlighters, I would have put it in my fails category. Now we're going to get into some foundations. And I will tell you that I do intend to do a foundation sort of roundup video. It will be, probably be something I film this next week because I've tried so many different foundations. I really wanted to compare and contrast all of them as a group so you can kind of hear my thoughts on how they compare one to another. Um, and then I will do a whole bunch of close-up footage and wear tests throughout the day so you can kind of see how they wear on my skin. But some of these foundations that I've tried were ones that I picked up during the summer months and I do want to share those with you and kind of my thinking at this point. What is currently on my face right now is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Radiance Foundation. I am the shade F2. This foundation definitely needs to be set with powder and that's partly why I've got it in this middle category. It's really creamy and it does feel really smoothing when you first put it on your skin um, but it never sets down and it really needs to be set because it will smear around on your face if you don't set it with a decent amount of powder. Not even a light dusting of powder. This one needs a pretty decent amount of powder and so I really have to make sure that I'm using the right type of powder. Um, what I found is this is a foundation that I'll like put my sunglasses on. If my sunglasses touch my, touch my cheek at all, they're like, mo it's moving the foundation around. Like I come out of the car and I take my glasses off and I have like a ring right here where it's like moved the foundation around. So I really do need to use a decent amount of powder to set this down. And so for me, that means using probably a ton of hourglass powder to kind of set this into place because that's one where I don't feel like um, the veil powder rather. I can use a decent amount of that and it never looks super heavy or cakey. If I use a pressed powder that has any sort of additional pigmentation in it, that's when I feel like this dewy hydrating foundation sort of sucks in that powder and it starts to look kind of heavy and cakey. Part of the reason that this isn't in my sort of favorites bucket is because this does not play well with any sort of dry patches on my face. Now you would think because this is a hydrating foundation that it would be the exact opposite. But what I found is that if I have any dry 
parts, which for me, I typically get them here around my chin, maybe a little bit on my nose, especially if I've been blowing my nose a lot because of allergies, sometimes at the tip of my forehead, but not a ton there. Typically, if I'm gonna have any sort of dryness, it's on my chin area here. I don't know why. Um, this, by the end of a day, if I hadn't exfoliated or used a smoothing primer underneath it when I have any sort of dryness going on, it looks awful. Like, I mean, it looks awful. It has emphasized everything. It looks like it's peeling and patchy on my chin. It makes my skin on my chin look, and even sometimes on my nose, look even drier than it was before I put this on. It's just a, such a strange reaction from this smoothing, lovely finish that it looks like when I first put it on to what it looks like at the end of the day. And it might be because I've had to use so much powder in order to get this to set and not move around on my face. So there are days, like today, quite frankly, where I had exfoliated my skin last night and I put on a little bit of a smoothing primer on my chin and it's it's going strong, like it looks really pretty. But there have been other days where I've looked in the mirror at the end of the day and my skin has looked awful. Like I've touched my face because I didn't use enough powder and stuff is smeared or I've had dry patches on my chin that I didn't even realize were there because I hadn't exfoliated in a few days and then all of a sudden I will, it will look god awful. So this one is just a little touchy for me. I will also say that this is one because it's very creamy and hydrating. If you've built it up a lot to get more of that fuller coverage and then you've set it with a powder, it can look really makeup-y. So I find that I have to work at a thin line layer in order to get this to work appropriately. So I think there's pros and cons with this one. I definitely will never be a favorite foundation of mine, but I have had days where I really enjoyed how it looked um, throughout the day. And then I've also had days where it's been a total fail on me. The other foundation that's in my It's Fine category is actually from AOE Studio. I picked up two shades. This is their Buildable Satin Foundation. Um, to be honest, this one I have less issues with than the uh, Makeup Revolution one. This is a satin finish foundation. Um, the biggest reason this one actually isn't ranked higher for me is just I, the shade is just okay. So the lighter shade that I got, uh, 301 Porcelain, was just way too light on me. And then the next shade up, which was 303 Buff, at least it, that uh, wasn't super yellow, it's just a little still too peachy on me. It's it, I can make it work because this is definitely more of a serum-like, I would say light medium coverage. Um, I didn't have nearly as many issues with this one as I did with the uh, uh, Makeup Revolution one. Uh, this is only, like I said, I think this is a dollar. Oh, is this a dollar? It's a little more than a dollar. I don't think this foundation was at all. I think it was like a dollar fifty-five or something like that. But also still incredibly affordable. You are getting 0.64 fluid ounces, so you're not getting quite a full ounce. But hey, that's hardly anything to complain about. This is a serum-like foundation. It does give a satin texture. I don't find that it clings or does anything weird to dry patches or things on my skin. I definitely feel like I end up pretty glowy with this one by the end of the day because of some of the things that are in here and I can't figure out if it is the glycerin that's in here um, or some of the de the dimethicone selections that they've picked but something in here definitely causes my skin to be get a little oily throughout the day if I was going to choose between the two foundations I've put in the just fine category I would be choosing this one I think the reason I put this in my just fine category is that I definitely have other foundations that I like more than this but I was incredibly shocked at how well this performed given its price point. And then just in general, um, I would rank this higher than a couple of high-end foundations I've tried recently. And that's partly why I wanna do this whole uh, collection of reviews for foundations because I do intend to rank those foundations as well. Just a heads up, this is gonna beat out quite a few high-end foundations that I've tried recently. Still isn't a favorite, favorite foundation, but it's close. Like it's it's close to being in that top tier. A couple of lip products to talk about. Um, one is from Ulta Beauty. This is their Velvet Matte Lip Crayon. This is the shade Glacier. Um, it's a really interesting soft pinky color. I think I wore this in a video um, with some teal green and it's a really fun sort of muted, murky, lavendery mauve. It's a, it's a great color. This formula is what the 
NYX one should have been. It's a matte that is smoothing and has some, some of those dimethicones, but it still glides on the lips. So this is definitely a lip product that I'm going to be hanging on to. I like the shade. I like the formula of it. It's just because it is matte and because it does feel a little drying on my lips by probably the four or five hour mark, um, it's not necessarily a favorite formula of mine, but I do think in terms of true matte formulas that look matte on your lips that don't give off a ton of shine, this is actually a really nice formula from Ulta Beauty. This is a plumping nudes lip gloss from Essence. So I have the shade that's big and this lip formula is definitely a little thicker and a little bit stickier than the Essence Shine 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 lipsticks, or glosses rather, that you know I love and adore. This one is slightly plumping. I definitely don't feel like it's super tingly, so if that's something that really bothers you, I don't think this formula would really drive you crazy. Um, it is very pigmented. I would argue this isn't a lip gloss. It really is more of a lip vinyl or liquefied lipstick because it is just pure saturated color. Uh, so it's not something that I think would layer well. It would really cancel out anything you put on underneath it. Um, but it is a very pretty color. The only negative for me is that I wish it was slightly less stickier and a little more gel-like. This reminds me more of a Buxom lip gloss, uh, which I don't hate hate those buxom sort of style formulas. I do feel like they last longer on their lips because you, they are a little more sticky. And I hate to even use the word sticky because I don't feel like this is a sticky, sticky formula. But if you've tried the Buxom, I feel like that's a good comparison in terms of it not being as gel-like as the Shine 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 or the Marc Jacobs glosses, but neither is it like a sticky, heavy, gloopy gloss like some of the matte glosses are. So yeah, I like this. And then the last product I wanted to talk about is a lipstick from Essence. This is from their This Is Nude line. This is 01, or 02 rather, Happy. Um, these are a little misleading because the shades on the bottom would lead you to believe that it's very nude and inside it's actually quite I don't know, at least on me, this is not even remotely a nude. This is the color I have on right now, which I think is actually more of a fall leaves color, sort of a darker, deeper, um, muted red for me, honestly. And a lot of this has to do with my undertones, so bear that in mind. If you are more of a medium undertone, this may be an absolutely perfect nude on you. This is a really nice creamy lipstick. It has a nice fruity set, fruity vanilla scent to it. It goes on really smoothly and pigmented. Lack of pigmentation is not going to be your problem here. The reason this is my fine categories, I find this to be a little little slippy for as dark of a color as it is on me. It's definitely hydrating and comfortable, but because it's got, it feels like some shea butter or something in it, honestly, it feels like it moves around a little bit on my lips. And so for me, because this is a slightly deeper color, this is one I feel like I have to use a lip liner with, which is what I've done today. I've, it's one where I've tried to like sheer it out and blot it out with my finger, and I don't really care for how it looks when I do that. Um, I do have a little bit of a Fenty gloss bomb over the top, which is why this is looking maybe a little more shiny than uh, my swatch did here. So I do think this is a nice lipstick formula. I don't think it's my favorite at the drugstore or just in general, but I do think it's a nice formula and you cannot beat the price of Essence makeup. I feel like Essence does lip products pretty well. All right, so now we're coming to my favorites. So I've got a handful of products here that I really did love and enjoy and just think are fantastic. So favorites for the summer months that I tried from the drugstore. One is from BH Cosmetics. This is their Hanging in Hawaii palette. Um, you guys, I think, know that the Love in London palette made it into my top five palettes, or top 10 palettes, rather. And I did end up picking up the Hanging in Hawaii palette, which was more of the sort of pinky, warm tone shades. Um, this is a really pretty palette. The mattes are a little bit more powdery, so think more Anastasia style shadows, but they also have fantastic pink pigmentation. These mattes just blend like a dream. They lay down so much pigment. They're so easy to work with and buff out, but they last incredibly well on the eyes. And then the shimmer shades are just so smooth. And I know creamy is the word that everyone uses to describe shimmer shades, but these are just so buttery and beautiful and smooth. So if you've tried the Love in London palette um, or really any of the newer 
BH Cosmetic eyeshadow palettes. I feel like all of them are kind of have a new formula to them. Uh, then this formula will seem very familiar to you. I do like that there are neutrals as well as warms in here, so I don't think it has to go super warm all the time. Today I just did a really simple look with this eyeshadow palette. I used the shade Aloha um, all over my lid and kind of just gently buffed it out. And then in my outer corner, I mixed these two darker shades and just kind of added a little bit of definition. And, and then I did put a little bit of the lightest hula shade kind of in my inner corner just to kind of give a little bit of brightness. But I've really enjoyed this palette. I think it's really pretty. I think it's going to be a really good pairing palette to go along with Love and London. I like that you've got a big nice mirror up here. I think it's a good size. It's not too big. And see, this is kind of the size that I thought that LA Girl palette was going to be. But that LA Girl palette was just even bigger and bulkier if you can see that there. So it's just, this is kind of as big of a palette as honestly I want inside of my collection. When you start getting to be this big, I just, I don't know, something about it turns off in my head and it also makes it a lot more difficult for me to store. I am slightly fuzzy on when I first tried these Essence Melted Chromes. I know I bought this one in May and I think I may have bought the taupe one in spring. So this might be a bit of a cheap product to put here in my favorites because I think I might have actually put this in my favorites in spring now that I'm thinking about it. You're gonna get it twice because I do feel like this is a very remarkable formula um, just on the market, not even at the drugstore. So I have two shades. I have Zinc About You, which is this really pretty mauve, uh, mauve-y, silvery shade. And then I also have um, Ironic, which is more of your traditional taupe shade. These are so stunningly metallic and wet looking. This formula is just, if you had me swipe this for swatch, this formula um, in store, I, without knowing the brand, I would tell you this was a, an incredibly expensive formula. I would think this was something from a very high-end brand. And so this is one of the, this is a poster child for me that just proves that it's not about money. Money does not equal an amazing formula. Money may buy you nicer packaging than this one in here, but you can formulate and make a wet looking eyeshadow um, for a few dollars. And and sell it successfully at the drugstore. So I love these melted chrome um, eyeshadows. I honestly wish they would bring out more shades because I feel like this shadow deserves to have a zillion different shades behind it. I also really enjoyed this uh, Revolution Pro Elements Core Eyeshadow Primer. This is very reminiscent of Soft Ochre Paint Pot from MAC in my opinion, which is great. I've been looking for a cream eyeshadow base that I think could replace some of those. The texture is very, very similar. It really does work as a phenomenal eyeshadow base to lock in um, eyeshadows, sort of blank out your eyes. This would be a fantastic formula if you'd like to cut creases because I do feel like it is um, really pigmented and will really cancel out shadows underneath. It also sets down on its own fairly quickly, so I don't feel like I have to use a setting powder or I don't worry about things sticking in weird ways because it's so wet. It really does set down to almost a powder texture uh, within a few seconds after applying it and getting it moved around on your eyes. So they do have a few other colors in this. I think they have one that has a slight pearly base and then one that's slightly deeper as well. But yeah, these are these are great. I tried one of these CoverGirl Exhibitionist um, glitter eyeshadows. I got the shade five. These are beautiful. These I think have a ton of pigment to them. So they're not just uh, glitter shadows, you know, the way that the Stila glitter and glows often are. This one actually has quite a bit of pigment to it so you end up with a really sort of wet foiled looking eyeshadow. I found these very easy to blend out. I didn't find them to be patchy. I could really maneuver things into place without them getting weird. Now I will say once these set do not try to apply any more to them. I actually had on a different eye look today and I ha was playing around with the uh, this palette here, the Hangin' in Hawaii palette, and I had pulled in some of the pinkier tones today. And then I went and added a little bit of this over the top, and I think it looked pretty, but then I realized that I wanted to add a little bit more in a different area, and so I add, layered, put a second layer on, I guess, and then it, then all hell broke loose. It was not pretty, so I ended up having to kind of wipe that off and start from scratch. But all that to say, a single coat, while it's still wet, 
good time to maneuver around, very easy to work with, and I really like this color. Now, I don't think that because this has so much pigment to it and it's less about glitter and it's more about sort of a, a, a micro shimmer in a suspended metallic shadow, you're not getting that glitter and glow effect the way you do from Stila. It's almost more like they're shimmering glows that have a small micro glitter running through it as well. So I do think it's a very beautiful product and clearly they are trying to dupe the vibes of the Stila Glitter and Glows. The last eye product I wanted to mention is from Milani. So this is their Stay Put Eyeliner and I got the shade Picante just because I felt like it was a really interesting sort of rusty red shade that I could see myself uh, using a lot in the fall time. This formula is so nice. So it does have a sharpener on one end and then it also has a little sponge that you can use to kind of uh, smudge out the liner and kind of um, blend it into almost more of a smudgy shadow. But once these lock into place, they do not budge. It's a very creamy, easy to use formula and I'm just so impressed so impressed with the formula in here. I tend to be more of a wooden pencil style lover because I tend to feel like these retractable liners dry out more quickly than their pencil counterparts because there is air surrounding that. So it'll be interesting to see if this has the longevity of some of my pencil eyeliners. But in terms of the formula, I really, really like it. And I could see myself picking up one or two other shades uh, from this line. I just think this was a really well executed eyeliner. So let's move to face products. I have three products to talk about, and that's actually the last three products I have to share with you. I didn't just realize I didn't really have any like top favorite lip products that I had picked this last round is what it is. Um, in terms of face products, one that I really, really like. Um, this is the NYX Born to Glow Foundation. I am in the shade Porcelain. It's a really good shade match for me as well. This is a very liquidy foundation. It's very lightweight. It doesn't look makeup-y at all. It really does sort of just melt into your skin in the most beautiful way. Like it's very smoothing. It's also very nicely hydrating. I do think this gives you light medium to maybe buildable to medium coverage. I don't think it's really gonna go past that. So nice on my skin, even when I have dry patches, even when my skin is looking um, less than perfect when I go to apply it, it really does work incredibly well for my skin. Now I did mention, I think when I got this and I was kind of hauling this for you as part of my, what did I buy in the month? I mentioned to you guys that this one can get a little glowy on me throughout the day. And I do think this is the case when in very hot and or humid environments, I did notice that I had to kind of blot my face towards the end of the day, um, that I did get a little shiny with this, but sometimes it didn't break down on me or do anything weird. It really did look fresh still, I was just able to kind of blot some of the oils off of my face and then go about the rest of my day. Uh, and that really didn't happen until probably more like the eight or nine hour mark when I felt like I was getting a little shinier than I would have liked. Now I also find because this is a very thin formula, it also mixes really well with other foundations. So if I have a foundation that I feel like is a little bit more coverage than I want, or needs a little bit of a smoothing element to it. I really do like this as a mixer. But the only thing I don't love about this one, honestly, is its packaging because it has just a, um, like a flat top squeeze tube. And because this is so runny, it's very hard to control how much product you get out. I almost always end up with more products squeezing out than I wanted. And then I also find that the cap gets a little messy. So just about every time I use it, I end up taking a tissue and just kind of like wiping off the cap like this before I put the lid back on to avoid it just turning into a complete hot mess. So I do feel like there could be a packaging improvement to this one, but I do really like it. Another product from NYX that I've actually enjoyed quite a bit is from their Bear to Me line, or Bear With Me line. This is their hydrating cheek tint. Uh, this is in the shade Detox Me. This is one that I bought and was kind of intimidated by when I first saw it, because it's like, 
insanely reddish orange um, but it is the blush I have on my cheeks today if you can believe it um, this is one where you can either kind of swipe it on with your finger or uh, with the stick or take some on your finger and blend it out it's very lightweight and watery um, you don't get a ton of pigment with this one because it is more of a gel texture um, it's very it's very sheer um, I do think you could build it up so if you were darker than me obviously these shades would work but its watery gel texture really does let it blend under the skin in a really beautiful soft way that doesn't feel overly blush. I think if uh, you guessed or tried to guess rather what blush I had on today I don't think any of you guys would have guessed this one. In terms of easy to use cream blush formulas that set completely down and with no sticky or dewiness left this has been a, a lot of fun so and then the final product I wanted to mention that was in my favorites list is actually from Makeup Revolution's Pro Line. This is their Sculpt and Glow um, in Desert Sky. You have a couple of different shades of this stuff, as I recall. Um, it's got a nice acrylic lid and then a plastic gold base to it. Both the contour and the highlight are lovely. So this contour shade I honestly use as a bronzer. I think a lot of shades that might come off as too uh, cool toned on some people are actually fantastic bronzer shades on me. And then this highlighter is just a gorgeous soft champagne. Um, it's not too pink. It really is nicely neutral. It's not too gold. Um, it's got a really, really soft texture that just melts into the skin and doesn't look like chalky highlighter um, but still gives a pretty nice intense glow to it. The bronzer is really finely milled and super soft to the touch. It's also one that I don't feel like I can ever screw up too much. It is the bronzer that I have on today. Um, so I have that kind of here on my cheeks and then a little bit here around my forehead as well. This is just, this is one I could see myself traveling with quite a lot and I think the undertone is absolutely beautiful. The texture of this is definitely matte but it's not a chalky matte. It's a matte that just kind of sinks into the skin. So sometimes if I'm wearing a super glowy foundation and I use a matte uh, bronzer I, I feel like it really looks strange because I've got this matte stripe here even if I blend it. I've got this matte section here where the rest of my skin is glowy. Um, this is a matte one that blends into the skin and doesn't give me that sort of super matte chalk-like effect um, where I apply it. So this is just a really, really nice little duo. I think it looks really nice in packaging and in terms of highlighter contour sort of palettes at the drugstore, uh, this might be my favorite. I'd have to go back and look yeah, I feel like this might be my favorite because I think both products are so good. I have other ones where I like the contour but not the highlighter and vice versa. This is one where they both are just really well executed. All right guys, so that wraps this up. Those are all of my fails, my finds, and my favorites for these drugstore products that I tried throughout the summer months. Let me know down in the comments if you have tried any of these, what you think of them. Would love to know your input on, the, on any of the products I've discussed today and how they worked for you. Or if there's something else you've tried recently at the drugstore that you have really been loving, let us all know down in the comments so we can all take a look at it. I hope you guys are having an amazing week and look forward to chatting with you down in the comments. Bye.